In this video, I will walk you through free response question number six from the 2018 AP Calculus exam. This problem is about slope fields and differential equations. Part A. A slope field for the given differential equation is shown below. Sketch the solution curve that passes through the point 0, 2 and sketch the solution curve that passes through the point 1, 0. I see the point 0, 2 right here. And this is sitting right on a string of slope lines that go horizontally through the point 0, 2. So this is the solution curve that passes through the point 0, 2. To sketch the solution curve that passes through the point 1, 0, all we have to do is trace the path of slope lines that passes through this point. And it seems to go something like this. Then it continues on like a mirror image to the left. Just make sure you draw your solutions all the way to the edges of the slope field. Part B. Let y equals f of x be the particular solution to the given differential equation with the initial condition f at 1 equals 0. Write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of y equals f of x at x equals 1. Use your equation to approximate f at 0 0.7. First, we need to write an equation for the tangent line. Whenever they ask us to find the equation of a tangent line, I always use point slope form, which reminds me that all I need is a point and the slope. The thing is, they already gave us a point. f at 1 is equal to 0. That translates into the point 1, 0. All I need is the slope at this point, and then I can write the equation. Well, the derivative will give us the slope at any point, including the point 1, 0. So, in order to find the slope, I will evaluate dy dx at the point 1, 0. This will equal 1 third, and then x is 1, so I don't need to write that. Moving on to the y, which is 0, I'm not going to put anything there either. That's going to leave negative 2 squared. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. And then I have positive 4 over 3. So the slope of the tangent line is 4 thirds. Now I can write the equation. The equation of the tangent line will be y minus y1 which is 0, so I write nothing, is equal to the slope, which is 4 over 3, times x minus x1, so x minus 1. So there's my equation. We can use this equation to approximate f at 0 0.7. f at 0 0.7 is approximately equal to 4 thirds times 0 0.7 minus 1. And guess what? This is a perfectly acceptable answer for the AP exam. If you wanted to simplify this further, you could remember that 0 0.7 is the same thing as 7 tenths. And the number 1 can be written as 10 tenths. So now I have f at 0 0.7 is approximately equal to 4 thirds times negative 3 tenths. The threes will cancel each other out. So I have f at 0 0.7 is approximately equal to, and this would be 4 over 10, well, negative 4 over 10, which reduces to negative 2 fifths, which equals negative 0.4. Both of these answers are equally acceptable. Part C. Find the particular solution y equals f of x to the given differential equation with the initial condition f at 1 equals 0. This is a separable differential equation, so let's get all of the y factors on the left side and all of the x factors on the right side. To start off, let's move the dx over here. I moved the dx over by multiplying both sides by dx. 
Now, let's take this factor and move it over here by dividing both sides by y minus 2 squared. Now that I have all the y factors on the left and all the x factors on the right, I can integrate both sides of this equation. As I prepare for some mental u substitution, I would like to rewrite this fraction using a negative exponent. For my mental u substitution, I'm thinking of u as y minus 2. Then u prime will simply be 1. This is why I don't need to actually do the u substitution, because I will simply end up dividing by u prime. But dividing by 1 doesn't change anything. So, using the power rule of integration, I'm going to find the antiderivative by adding 1 to this exponent. So then I will have u to the negative 1 power. And then I need to divide by my new exponent. So I will have a negative in the front. And the u is y minus 2. So that's the antiderivative on the left. I'm going to save the plus c for the right-hand side. Over here, I bring down the 1 third. And then I will have x squared as I add 1 to the exponent. And I divide by the new exponent, so I divide by 2, plus c. Rewriting the negative exponent as a fraction and multiplying 1 third times 1 half, we have this. Now let's use the initial condition to find the value of c. This is telling us that y is 0 when x is 1. So let's make those substitutions for x and y. So now we have this, but negative 1 divided by negative 2 simplifies to positive 1 half. 1 squared is 1, so on the right side we just have 1 sixth plus c. Now let's subtract 1 sixth from both sides of the equation. 1 half minus 1 sixth is the same thing as 3 over 6 minus 1 over 6 which is 2 over 6, which reduces to 1 third. So c is equal to 1 third. Let's substitute this back in for c. Now this is a particular solution to the differential equation that satisfies the initial condition. However, they want us to write the solution in the form y equals f of x. In other words, we need to get y by itself. Let's rewrite the right side of the equation as a single fraction. So I went ahead and put the x squared up into the numerator. And of course, 1 third is the same thing as 2 over 6. Now we have these like denominators. Combining the two fractions into 1, we have this. On the next step, I'm going to move this negative sign down here by dividing both sides by negative 1. We're almost done. Now let's take the reciprocal of both sides of the equation. So on the left side, I will have y minus 2. And on the right side, I have negative 6 over x squared plus 2. All I have to do now is add 2 to both sides of the equation. So here is the particular solution to the differential equation, which satisfies the initial condition written in the form y equals f of x.